78. 99. 100. No, just kidding. Good evening, friends. Well, we are officially on the home stretch of the 2019-20 school year. An apt metaphor, I think, since tonight's episode has an athletics and physical fitness theme to it, including our usual fitness corner component and an interview with one of the most talented athletes ever to don the scarlet and gray, professional lacrosse player, NCAA national champion, and Tawaritan award winner, Kyle Harrison from the class of 2001. That's why I'm sporting my workout attire. Indeed, Ooh, these last few months have demanded a great deal from all of us. We've had plenty of opportunities, in particular, to flex our spices muscles. Let's do a quick recap on that front. Simplicity. We've all been forced into a simpler lifestyle with less going on and more time for reflection and contemplation, whether we want it or not. I've been wondering if, when we move back to something more like our normal reality, we'll all rush back into our old routines and forget the value we may have found in this less frantic pace. Peace! Ugh. As the world has slowed down, there's a certain sense of peace, or at least reduced busyness and noisiness. I, for example, have heard more bird songs than I ever noticed before, because the bustle of daily activity and the cacophony that accompanies it has subsided. I've also noticed how much I miss the peace that comes from meeting for worship. Integrity. The pandemic has forced all of us to make difficult choices in our personal and professional lives. Choices that, at the end of the day, reveal what's most integral to us and the extent to which we're willing to stand up for what we believe in. Community. Ugh. However we define this term, our family, our friends, our neighborhood, our school, our city, our nation, the wider world, We've all had to find new ways to remain connected to the communities that mean the most to us. We've also been asked to consider what we're willing to do to contribute to these various groups and what we can ask of them. Equality. <sighs> the pandemic, which in some ways is the great equalizer in that we're all dealing with the same overriding fear and anxiety, has also revealed and magnified the inequities in our society. How we respond to what is revealed demands that we explore our sense of fairness and our desire to be one, particularly with those on the margins. And stewardship. We're all our brothers or sisters or children's or grandparents or partners keepers in physically or emotionally demanding times like these. And we're asked to be stewards of all that matters the most to us. So even while we're scattered, let's keep our spices muscles pumped up. We're going to need them. Talking with Kyle Harrison from the class of 2001. Uh, Kyle, thank you very much for being with us. You have uh, any any favorite memories from Friends School? I have a, I have millions of them, and I think for, for me, what's so special um, is that I went for so long. So I have so many memories of like each level of, mm -hmm. of my time there. Um, but you know, obviously from a lacrosse perspective, junior year we bumped into the A conference and kind of took our lumps. Um, and then that senior year, being able to beat like a Calvert Hall and beat a St. Mary's, like that, that was a big deal for us. Yeah. Um, and those are memories that like are just incredible. And just how everybody's interests were so different. You know, we yeah. had like on that team, like doctors and actors and dudes that like, you know, weren't really all that into sports, but we, yeah. we figured out how to do it together and, and had some success. So those are certainly some of my favorite memories. For college, you wound up just a, a couple miles south on Charles Street at Johns Hopkins. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, can you tell us about your experience there? How was it different from or similar to your time at Friends, uh, both athletically and academically and socially and all of that? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, you know, obviously, um, Friends was challenging academically and, and athletically. I think we were still emerging to what we were going to be. Um, we were fortunate that we had a class, both on the men's and women's side, that had like a lot of really serious athletes. So I think we were actually pretty competitive at the time. Um, and then transitioning to Hopkins, like uh, academically, clearly it was really tough. Um, and then athletically with the lacrosse team, it was really tough. But but candidly, I'm a person that I operate uh, best when it's regimented um, and very like clear what I'm supposed to do. Like I, you know, I'm not a guy that could have gone to like a University of Maryland or one of these bigger schools where the, there's frats and parties and this and like I, I 
mentally that's not for me for me it was i need i need the two things i want which is i need to get into the best school i can possibly get into and i want to compete for national championships and nothing else matters to me i'm going to spend four years focused on those two things and that's exactly what johns hopkins was which is why it was so great for me like i got to go to school which was really hard and i got to go work out and play lacrosse which was really hard and then like that was it go to sleep and do it again for four years uh which is what i wanted so um, as you were finishing college, um, was there ever any question for you of putting down your lacrosse stick and, um, you know, which you didn't do, uh, but, nope. but how, did you, how did you think about that as you um, made the decision to become a professional lacrosse player? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So uh, coming from, this is honestly another beautiful thing about friends, coming from friends, um, and maybe it would have been different had I played or pursued another sport, but there was, there was never really any talk about like, this is what you're going to do for a lit, like full time. Like you are chasing this lacrosse thing, whatever that, that may be. So when I got to Hopkins, it was about, I loved writing. I was a writing major. I had aspirations of like the ESPN route. Um, and even, even, you know, wrote for them for a little bit, wrote for inside lacrosse. Like that was my path. Um, and I, I had no, I was very confident as an athlete. Um, but had no expectations of where it would land. Like I didn't think I'd be the Tawarton winner or player of the year, any of that stuff. So like my plan up until like, I want to say like midway through senior year was like, I'm going to graduate. Um, if I have opportunities in lacrosse, great. If I don't like, I'm going to pursue this writing thing. Um, and that's like when, you know, things started happening. Like I, you know, that, that summer before my senior year is when like I started hearing from some manufacturers about potential sponsorship deals when I'm done. Um, and then that, that you know, two week span was a whirlwind. We won the national championship. Um, then when I, you know, a couple of days later, me and Ben fly to DC, we're at the Twarton or whatever, uh, for the Twarton event. And then a couple of days later, all the seniors go to Cancun uh, to celebrate. And then we come right back and it's Team USA tryouts. Uh, and it was, and then number one in the MLL draft. And it was just like thing after thing um, that gave me like confidence to be like, all right, maybe this lacrosse thing is something I could pursue. And then the thing that kind of obviously pushed it over the top was I signed my first endorsement deal at the time uh, with Nike and then with STX. And it just became like, okay, this, this is, this is what I'm going to do for the foreseeable future. Yeah. What, what do you think will be next for you? Obviously you'll stay involved with STX, I imagine, and, and gear. You know, I think I've been fortunate and that a lot of the partnerships I have, I'm, I'm also an owner in some of these companies. Uh, so whether that's a Tomahawk Shades, um, that I've been one of their ambassadors for eight years, but I also own a, a significant part of that company. Um, you know, PLL, I've, I've, like I mentioned earlier, I've been a part of PLL from the beginning. Um, you know, there's some organizations that I've invested in over the years. Um, so I, I, I assume when I'm done playing, I'll just get more involved in a more meaningful way with all of these different organizations. Um, but, you know, lacrosse has been so good to me and, and I've been so fortunate in that I think I came along right at the time when like all this stuff was starting to happen. Like mm -hmm. manufacturers were becoming like a big thing where they're signing people to significant deals and pro lacrosse was becoming a thing. And, um, you know, the, the opportunity to run events and camps and um, different, different ways of generating revenue uh, were starting to reveal themselves. And so I came along right at that time and then now fast forward to the pll premier lacrosse league where we've got an nbc deal so we're on tv on the weekends which is you know for lacrosse professionally that's a big deal yeah. uh typically like you'd have to like try and find lacrosse you know yeah. on tv or the internet whatever it is so the fact that like saturday at 2 p.m 2 p.m you can turn it on and it's there like that that's a big deal um and so you know I, I'm, I'm excited about the future for sure i'd like to get back into writing but at the same time, you know, we've got two little ones that I, I, I want to be around. So yeah. I'll, that's a long-winded way of saying that yeah. when, I, when I'm done playing, I'll probably be doing a lot of the same stuff I'm currently doing. Yeah. Lacrosse has, one of the things that's changed in that time you're talking about is it has obviously just exploded in parts of the country beyond Baltimore and the Northeast where it had always yeah. had a base. Um, yeah. How do you think that's going to change the game when some of the best athletes in Florida and yeah. California and Texas are now growing up playing lacrosse the way that really only maybe used to happen in Baltimore and Long Island and upstate New York. Yeah. No, you're spot on. Yeah. No, it's that. So strangely enough, to your point, like I was lucky in that I lived in LA for the 10 year uh, window when like you saw 
the best athlete in the school go from the quarterback or wide receiver to the lacrosse player. So you got to watch like lacrosse be like the alternative sport that like the kid that really doesn't want to play any other sports played to then watching like the best athletes at the school transitioning and into lacrosse. So it's cool. I think, I think it's good for the growth of the sport, obviously. Um, you know, like, uh, we talk about it all the time internally as you know, at the PLL and, and just with my buddies. But, uh, you know, when like the LeBron Jameses of the world choose lacrosse, yeah. I think that's when it's going to get like super interesting. Like when the best, when our top athletes in the, in the country um, choose lacrosse over football, basketball, soccer, um, I think that's when like it'll be super interesting to see like what the potential of the sport is. Yeah, that's great. Well, Kyle, I am very grateful for your time. I wish you of and course. your family well. Always great to see you. Yes, sir. And I'll see you again soon. Stay right. healthy. Take care. minute wellness tip of the day. I strongly encourage you to keep a fitness journal. If you log your workouts, you'll improve each week because you'll be able to hold yourself accountable. Another wonderful thing to be able to do is on a gorgeous day like today, get outside. You've got lots of things around your house you can use. I'm going to use this bench to do an incline push-up, to do a tricep dip, and you can do a lot of different things with the things you have around your house. So on a day like today, get outside. If it's not as nice, find stuff around the house you can use, but stay active and stay fit. Thanks for watching, friends. Before we end with our usual moment of silence, I want to remind you that we are now having community-wide meetings for worship at four o'clock each Thursday afternoon in May. We had our first one last week and it was a wonderful collection of alumni, faculty, staff, students. Uh, it was great to see everyone there. So I hope you'll consider joining us. You can learn more about that wherever you get your friend school information, including our social media channels. Now let's end with a moment of quiet together. Thank you, be well.